cuddly guy next door, Nelson Peltz. Oh, we all got a Nelson Peltz living in one of our neighborhoods. You know, big, bigoted, racist pieces of crap. Yelling anyway, at your kids to get off your lawn. Yeah, yelling, screaming at the clouds to get out of the sky. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Well, for those of you who do not know, there's kind of a power struggle going on over at Disney right now. Nelson Peltz and his main guy supporting him, Ike Perlmutter, the guy who used to be Kevin Feige's boss until Kevin Feige threatened to leave Disney unless they got rid of him. Bob Iger took Kevin Feige out from under Ike Perlmutter, blah, blah. And Ike Perlmutter's been pissed about it ever since. Well, he's trying to take over some board seats on Disney. And, and, and really, a lot of people say he was trying to remove Bob Iger as CEO, wants to bring in his own kind of stuff. And we've got an upcoming, you know, ownership vote. A vote amongst the shareholders to see if they will grant Nelson Peltz what he wants, kick off a couple of members of the Disney board and replace them with his lackeys. And, you know, we've talked about that a, a little bit here and there. And, and listen, uh, not to take anything away from Nelson Peltz has had an incredibly successful run as a financial investor. He has. There, I'm not going to take that away from him. The dude, when it comes to money, he knows how to make money. He does. <coughs> that being said, in a recent comments being made by Nelson Peltz. Um, he, he kind of did some really stupid things. He said some really, really dumb things. Uh, one of the things he said was when, you know, they put to him like Disney's been mentioning, you don't really know anything about the movie mis making business. He says, well, maybe I don't know how to make movies, but I don't think they know how to make movies either. Oh, got him. I'm convinced. Zing. Roast his ass. Wow. All those billion dollar films. Talk about yeah. receipts. Man, I'm sold. Receipts. <laughs> Timeline. He no did. idea. No idea. And as far as Kevin Feige, Feige Schmeige. That putz doesn't know what he's doing. Listen, just to quote a little bit of what Nelson Peltz just recently said. This comes to us from the folks over at uh, CBR. When pressed if that means that Kevin Feige should be fired, Peltz added, I'm not ready to say that. Notice he didn't say no. I'm not ready to say that. Yeah, I just want to make it But I question his record. <laughs> I question Kevin Feige's record. That <laughs> dude whose movies have made thirty billion dollars. Billion. I question his record. L let's just go back to this. I'm not ready to say we should fire him. I'm not saying I won't, but I'm not ready to say we will. I I'm just saying I question his record. People go to watch a movie or a show to be entertained. They don't go to get a message. I just want to know if if Nelson Peltz knows that almost every movie, almost every relevant movie in history has a message. The Godfather has a message. Al Pacino talks about it all the time. Citizen Kane has a message. Movies are art. Artists have things to say. It's just whether or not they're the things you want to hear. But anyway, I, I just want to go from there. They don't go to get a message. This is where his real sharp intellect comes out. Why do I have to have a Marvel... I'm not really sure what a Marvel is, but I don't need. I uh, yeah, I'm confused about that is one he, too. Is he the mom in Arrested Development? Is he giving people money saying go s buy a Star Wars? Go yeah. buy a Star Wars, <laughs> kids. All right, why do I have to have a Marvel that's all women? Uh, just a fact check. There is no Marvel film that has all women. Just want to point that out. Uh, not that I have anything against women. You know, you're talking to a chauvinist asshole when they have to preface what they're saying. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It always makes me feel safer. Not that I have anything against I women. I good then. Like, anyway, yeah, you probably don't. Not that I have anything against women, but why do I have to do that? Why do I have to watch a movie with women? Guess what, dipshit? You don't. <laughs> you don't. Just shut up. <laughs> why can't I have marvels that are both... Okay. 33 Marvel films... Three of them have female leads. 33 Marvel films. Why can't I have both? Anyway. That's three too many. That's three too many, baby. <laughs> and then he says, and why do I need an all-black cast? I know. Oh, Man. Where, where is that one? I, I don't know, because last time I checked, Bilbo saved her life by throwing himself in front of a bullet, and then at the end of the film, saved the world by taking down the bad guy black characters who are going to go and conquer the world. So I'm not quite sure what movie had an all-black <laughs> cast. 
but let's I, I want to I want to sit here for a second and dissect this a little bit. I want to go into this brainchild nutfucker here uh, ab about some of the things that this moron has said. Um, first of all, I, I know we already mentioned it, but I got to go back to this thing. I question Kevin Feige's record. I question Kevin Feige's record. Listen, if you are one of the Disney shareholders, this should be the end of the discussion for you. Any sh Disney shareholder that votes this guy's way is a moron. We have a producer who has created the most successful film franchise in the history of Hollywood, averaging nearly $1 billion per film with a $30 billion deposits against 33 movies that he's made. Nothing in Hollywood history has ever come close to that record of success. Ever. And this nipple pimple is saying, I question this guy's record? I don't I don't know if this Kevin Feige guy knows what he's talking about. I, I don't I don't think I don't think he understands the movies. Yeah, it's classic gaslighting. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and listen, I just for the record, okay? If Nelson Peltz, who I'm sure is watching this show, <laughs> were to say to me, Okay, can't be a but what has Kevin Feige done for us lately? Because listen, nobody. Actually, I get complaints from people saying, John, why are you being so me negative on Marvel lately? But listen, uh, nobody talks more about how this is not this. Right now, we are not in Marvel's finest stretch. We talk about it all the time. And they got to get things turned around. We've talked about some things that may be behind that. But in case... Peltz wants to come and say, yeah, well, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, all those billion dollar films and all the records and all the whatever. But what has Kevin Feige done lately? All right. Okay. Let's, let's look at lately. Let's just go back a couple of years. Let's just take a second, take opinions out of it, and look at these little pesky things called facts. Ugh, that's too hard to do. It's, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's no fun. Critical Looking at facts right. isn't fun. Let's just look at the last couple of years. And as critical as I have been of Marvel's performance the last couple of years, you still have to give credit where it's due. And let's take a look at some facts. And let's let's do, so we can put it in context, just for the sake of context, let's hold it up against their nearest competitor, DC. All right, just, just for some comparison, just so we can have context, all right? If we go back starting at the beginning of 2022, Marvel has put out six films. Doctor Strange 2, Black Panther 2, Guardians 3, Thor 4, Ant-Man 3, and The Marvels. Six films. Now, by contrast and comparison, DC has put out five films since the beginning of 2021. Aquaman 2, Blue Beetle, The Flash, Shazam 2, and Black Adam. Now, Wait, did you say Black Adam? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pelts. Because Pelts, Pelts may have a problem with that. <laughs> Wait, why do I got to have that? So Black Adam, okay? So uh, Marvel had six, DC had five. All right. How did they perform? And, and again, we're, all, we're not trying to put this up, say, look how bad DC is. No, no, just for, just for context. We're just holding them both up for context. So how did they perform? All right. Well, since 2022 began, here's what DC Films' results have been. Aquaman Fire. 2 made $434 million. Blue Beetle made 128. These are worldwide numbers, by the way. Blue Beetle made $128 million. The Flash made $266 million, Shazam 2 made $132 million, and Black Adam, sorry Peltz, made $390 million. Now that's a grand total of $1.35 billion, but if, just, just to compare apples and apples, that means on average, the films that DC has put out since the beginning of 2022 have averaged $270 million per film. Okay? Now, we just set that up as... A plateau. Just say, here's, here's what we're going to compare against. Here's our context. What has Marvel done since the beginning of 2022? Well, their films have had the following results. Doctor Strange 2 made $952 million. Black Panther 2 made $853 million. Guardians 3 made $845 million. Thor 4 made $760 million. Ant-Man 3 uh, made $463 million dollars. And the Marvel and the Marvels, I should say, made two hundred million dollars. I want to point out that four of the six films they put out since the beginning of twenty twenty two have made over seven hundred and fifty million dollars. Seven hundred and fifty million dollars. 
four of the films they put out since 2021 or since the beginning of 2022 have made over $750 million. In total, since the beginning of 2022, Marvel's films have made $4.07 billion and have had an average of $678 million per film. Well, you know, I think I, I'm seeing a pattern here. If we're looking at these numbers, yeah. Ant-Man 3 had two women in it. The Marvels had three. Now, that's, <laughs> now, now follow me. Follow me. That's Slippery five, slope. That's five women. I don't and, like this version well, of Well, now math. math is math. At a cost of $100 million per female, you reach $200 million from Thor's 4760. So that's the problem. Obviously, I'm Ellie, a you've got to take into account all the women that are in Black Panther, too. Well, no, well. this is convenient math. But convenient. Again, yeah. For context, DC Films, the other major comic book movie production outfit since tw the beginning of 2022, $270 million per film. Marvel, in their weakest state that they've ever been in, you may or may not agree with me when I say that, but it's it's what I think when I look at the uh, well, like everything. In the weakest state that Marvel's ever been in, and in the weakest stretch that Marvel has ever had, whereas they're making competitors average two hundred seventy million dollars per film, Marvel films in this weak state and in this weak stretch are averaging six hundred and seventy eight million dollars per film with four of those films being over 750 million and by the way in case nelson's interested let's talk about these women movies out of 33 films marvel has had three female-led films all right they had black widow captain marvel and the marvels making 379 million 1.13 billion and 200 million dollars on average if you average that out the women films have averaged $570 million per film. Let's talk about the black-led films. Out of 33 films that Marvel has produced, 33, two of them have had black leads. Or as Peltz would say, two too many. <laughs> two of them have had black leads, all right? Okay, why do I need to have that? Nelson Pelt says, well, what did those movies do? Black Panther 1 made 1.35 billion. Black Panther 2 made 859 million. They average 1.1 billion dollars per film. Oh, and by the way, won three Academy Awards nominated for five, including Marvel's first Best Picture nomination. No. Yeah. Ah, why do we gotta make that one? Why do we gotta make oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, they've only made two out of 33. And by the way, those two average 1.1 billion dollars. Now, you can have whatever opinions you want about all those films and which ones are good and which ones are bad, and that's those are all fair discussions to have. But the numbers are the numbers. The facts are the facts. And when you've got a dick zit coming out and saying, I question Kevin Feige's yeah, these are getting better and track better. record. <laughs> I, question, I question Kevin Feige's track. If you are a Disney investor, immediately your alarms should be going off. The flag should be going up and you go like, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Because this guy who he questions his record has made us more money than any other, than Walt Disney himself has made us. It's absolutely preposterous. And, and, and listen, I'm sorry, it's okay to have opinions and this, that, and the other thing, but at the end of the day, Nelson Peltz is that shriveled up bag of shit racist bigot who just lives next door that is constantly calling the cops because you're mowing your lawn too loud. It's an embarrassment. <laughs> I said earlier, basically Nelson Peltz is that old city councilor in Parks and Rec. That's what, it, that's, there he is. Just so you know, that's not Nelson Peltz. No. But it kind of is. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. And listen, you can be a Disney shareholder and maybe not like the direction the company's going in. That's fair. You can be a Disney shareholder and think, hey, listen, I kind of question our leadership right now. That's fair as well. That's all totally fair. But if your other option is this guy who says, I don't think they know how to make movies. I question Kevin Feige's record. I apparently don't know numbers. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's kind of a joke. Anyway, guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, 
Miracle Made. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so that you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. When they arrived at our house, my wife Anne loved to feel them so much, she couldn't even wait for me to get home to put them on our bed. Miracle Made has self cleaning. These sheets are infused with silver that prevents up to 99.7 of bacterial growth leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. Miracle Sheets also have incredible comfort and quality. Miracle Sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. So go to TryMiracle, that's T-R-Y-M-I-R-A-C-L-E dot com slash Campia to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40% and if you use our promo code CAMPIA at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you will get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash CAMPIA and use the code CAMPIA to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash CAMPIA to treat yourself. Uh, Chris... Uh, you've sat very patiently as I've gone on my thing here. Uh, what What do you think about uh, Nelson Peltz's comments? I mean, he seems really reasonable to me. He seems really just, reasonable. No. Wouldn't it be wild if that's what I came out the gate with? Of like, no, he's right. <laughs> he's he right. makes a good point. He brings up some excellent points here. It, it's giving a lot of, I can't hate women. I have a mother. Or, <laughs> I have a mom. How can I hate or women? Or somebody who brings up that they have a black friend when they talk about like, but also voting is weird, isn't it? Like, <laughs> I don't love where a lot of these things are coming from. And neither does Disney. The uh, actual Disney folks have clapped back pretty hard. They released a statement talking about how his ideas are the things that are going to keep things from happening, right? Mm. This could be the worst thing because he's also suggesting that they have this whole board reviewed way of approaching media now. Yeah. So yeah. that he wants to put 40 to more cooks in the kitchen for the creatives. Exactly. Yeah. And Disney came out and said, the thing that's going to impede us the most is having an 81 year old hedge fund manager with no creative experience telling us what we can creatively do. Yeah. And to come for somebody, I've not loved the last few Marvel movies, right? And I've made. I think they've that never be no been secret. weaker than they are right now. Sure. I, I think they're in their worst state that they've ever been in right now. But to say that the person who's made you thirty billion dollars is not the right fit is interesting to me. <laughs> Just, well, then who do you want, buddy? Because you're putting yourself up for the job and I don't know what you've seen. The idea of, oh, they don't know how to make movies and I don't know how to make movies, so why don't I just give it a go is so asinine to me. It seems like such a ridiculous thing to say. So, uh, I mean, I don't understand how a person said the quiet part out loud. That's really the big thing here. <laughs> of like, just let everybody loud. let you know that you're racist and misogynistic. Um let me see if I can find one of these other quotes here. By the way, I just want to point out, I was just searching. I was looking for Nelson Peltz's, uh, Nelson Peltz's expressed outrage when Avengers came out and had an all white cast. And I, I couldn't find, I couldn't find his, uh, his objections. Well, exactly. I couldn't and find you, his complaint. You can't have it both ways, right? I can't say, well, Avengers is an all male cast. Cause someone is going to say, no, it's not. No, yeah. it's not. There's Scarlet. And yeah, Black you know, in there. you see, you see Maria Hill in there. There yeah. are women in there. How dare you? Yeah. Like, you don't get it both ways. You don't get to be, to borrow a phrase, cafeteria Catholic, right? Where you pick and choose what your belief system is. Yeah. You have to look at the facts here. I'm just going to tell you an anecdote because it's giving me this. Growing up in Texas, I had a neighbor who's very, very Southern Na and delightful, yeah. but also incredibly conservative. And she went on a trip to New York and she was going to go see The Lion King. When I asked her out what, she said, oh, I mean, it was good, but it was so African. <laughs> it's a... It's a story about a lion the lions in Africa. in Africa. And that's what a lot of these things are giving me right now. Our movies can't have messages. Every single one does. Hot Tub Time Machine has a has message. Has a message. It absolutely does. Yeah. Get over that. We can't have women-led films. Okay, well, you have only had a handful and the Three others out of 30. did fine, right? Not all of your male-led films have done well. We can't have an all-black cast. Well, you haven't. You haven't had one yet. So... I just feel like this is somebody who is using their own personal political or or personal agenda to make movies that are, quote, 
not woke, which good job, Grandpa, for using that terminology. Oh, That's the best way to sneak in is use modern. the words. But it feels like somebody is using woke in place of, as usual, saying, I don't like opinions, people, or genders that are different than mine. Mm -hmm. They scare me, and I don't want it on my screens. Have you seen Seinfeld? Yeah. Okay. You know who Nelson Peltz is? There's an episode of Seinfeld, for those of you who might remember this. I kind of want to say he's the Nazi, at a but two on the nose. <laughs> where Jerry's at a wedding, and he's with his date. Uh -huh. It's the episode where he, he gets into it, Brian Cranston's dentist character. Yeah. He's making jokes about dentists, and he's with his date. And they're they're putting down dentists and like they're like, what do you call somebody who flop who flunked out of med school? What a dentist? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, screw dentists. And then then so Jerry and his date laugh. Yeah, screw dentists. And then the date just as the, before the credits roll, the date goes, and don't even get me going on the blacks and the Jews. <laughs> That's Nelson Peltz. <laughs> That's Nelson Damn. Peltz. Nelson Peltz is Jerry's date at that wedding. Damn. Yeah, that's, love, that's Nelson Peltz. Peltz I love that mouth. you said Soup Nazi. <laughs> Soup Nazi actually had a skill set, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, I, I actually did. have a quote because you were talking about a quote. It reminds me of people like this. It, mm -hmm. It's from Mark Twain. Mm -hmm. The trouble ain't that there's too many fools, but that lightning ain't distributed right. Ooh. <laughs> that's a great line. Well done. Anyway, guys, question <laughs> is, what do you think? Kevin Feige, you know, he doesn't have a very good track record, apparently. Uh, we've been told by a guy who knows nothing about movies. Uh, what do you think about the comments? Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.